So, Pluto's this planet way out there that used to be one of the main planets. But now, folks like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku are talking about it again. They're wondering if it might crash into Neptune. How could that even happen, and what would it mean? Is this some weird thing we haven't seen before? Or is there more to it? Let's check out what might happen if Pluto and Neptune actually hit each other. Pluto, known as a dwarf planet, is still interesting to scientists. Some think it's getting way too close to Neptune. Tyson and Kaku are warning that these two could crash, which might be bad news for us on Earth. How could a crash like that even happen? Pluto goes around the Sun differently than the other planets. It takes 248 years to go all the way around once. Since we found it in 1930, it hasn't even finished one trip. Plus, its path isn't a circle like the other planets. It's more of an oval. What's even weirder is that Pluto's path is tilted, like 17 degrees off from the other planets. That makes its path kind of crazy. For about 20 years each orbit, Pluto actually gets closer to the Sun than Neptune does. So why haven't they crashed? Well, it's because of gravity from the other planets. After discovering Pluto, astronomers tried to figure out why it moves so strangely. Unlike other planets that are flat, this planet's path is strangely inclined and irregular. Even though they cross paths eventually, which raises the question of stability, it's an effect known as the three-body problem in space. It is sort of like trying to guess when they will cross paths based on initial starting position and how it influences another. The other planet's orbits are ensured by concurrent libration. What this means is as Pluto crosses Neptune's orbit, the bodies will be separated by 90 degrees to avoid a crash. Another thing is orbital precession, which refers to the movement of a planet's orbit which is vertical. It can be said that because it happens near Neptune it is above their plane. Another thing too is the VSSK wobbling three researchers studied celestial bodies and their gravitational pull. This wobbling shows the underling forces and stability. Back in the 80s, computer models showed that Pluto's path can be weird. Small stuff at the start could change where it goes later. But these models also showed that it stays pretty steady for a long time, like millions or billions of years. To really get what's going on with Pluto and Neptune, we need to think about how the big planets like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn pull on them. Neptune is a big deal because it controls Pluto's path in a special way. For every two trips Pluto makes around the Sun, Neptune makes three. This keeps Pluto steady. But it's not just Neptune. Jupiter's gravity is a big help and Saturn chips in too. All of these keep Pluto from crashing into Neptune. Without planets like these, it would be a cosmic hellscape. So, the idea of Pluto and Neptune crashing shows just how tricky space is and how important it is to check out how stable these paths are. Even though Pluto's route looks wild, it just shows how balanced everything is. Space is full of surprises, and Pluto is a good example of how weird things can get. A celestial body's orbit can change based on tiny positions. Aided by simulations, they help scientists. These simulations may show that Pluto is stabilized by vibration. While stabilized, the simulations have also helped researchers understand that Pluto is irregular due to constant changing of outcomes because the original start changes it. Despite the apparent chaos, Pluto continues through space. Predicting movements like this is a massive challenge. What we know about this is always unsure. It's all based on numbers that can differ in the end as well. Aside from its chaotic orbit story, Pluto continues to remind us of the ever-changing nature of the universe. Learning about this planet's orbits gives us a wider context on the solar system, including how it influences others. So why are Tyson and others talking about a crash with all of these forces at play? Tyson, who helped change Pluto from a planet to a dwarf planet, has some thoughts. He thinks it's not a bad thing that our knowledge has allowed Pluto to be reclassified due to constant discoveries. Tyson thinks that there are always answers to be had with orbital complexities. Pluto could collide into Neptune. Only research and time will ensure and guarantee us a true answer. He is curious about what is left in our own solar system. The thought of a Neptune crash is just a taste in the mysteries of the universe and continues to force us to examine planets' dynamic. If they crashed, it would provide valuable insights into the system's evolution. Considering these two bodies, Pluto is made of ice and nitrogen and its atmosphere is primarily methane and carbon monoxide in the solar system's cold outer ring. 
Neptune is primarily made out of helium hydrogen. In any case, the shift in these planets will create a profound event. Jupiter being the solar system's largest planet will give Pluto more of stable orbit to avoid Neptune's domain. Saturn will continue to create complex environments making it less of a devastation or collision. The natural barrier often seen is the resonance between the two planets where Pluto completes two and Neptune completes three. However, it's important to understand this balance is guaranteed forever. These shifts can disrupt resonance and lead to outcomes we didn't expect. New data and tech will allow our models to create data with the planets including Pluto and Neptune. Planet 9 is a planet we continue to examine based on planets like Pluto potentially pushing them towards new paths. Other forces like the Sun losing mass will alter them over time including Pluto and Neptune. Comets and other bodies are also influencing the orbit. So the shifts in orbit may continue to have Pluto's orbit adjusting the gravity in space. Pluto's that little, far-off world that used to be a planet. But hey, some brainy folks like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Miyoku have been talking about it again. They're wondering if it might actually crash into Neptune. Sounds crazy, right? But how could that even happen, and what if it did? Is this some weird space accident waiting to happen? So, Pluto, planet, then not a planet, now a dwarf planet. It still gets people thinking. Recently, some smart folks notice Pluto's orbit is getting a little too close to Neptune's. Tyson and Miyoku are like, uh, oh, this could be bad. A crash could mess things up. Maybe even for Earth. But how does a collision like that even work? Pluto's trip around the Sun is weird. It takes almost 250 years to make one loop. Since we found it in 1930, it hasn't even finished a single year. And get this, Pluto's path isn't a nice circle. It's more like an oval, and it's tilted way off compared to where the other planets go. Makes things complicated. Here's a mind bender. For about 20 years in its year, Pluto is closer to the Sun than Neptune. So why haven't they smashed into each other already? It's all about gravity. After Pluto was found, people tried to figure out its crazy orbit. Unlike the other planets, it's at a weird angle and shaped all funny. Even though it crosses Neptune's path, it doesn't crash. It's some space magic. Or, you know, physics. Think of it like this. Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun are playing a game of gravitational tug-of-war. Figuring out where they'll be is tough because they all pull on each other. The trick that keeps things stable is called non-concurrent libration. Basically, when Pluto crosses Neptune's path, they're always far enough apart that they avoid each other. They're like dancers who know their steps. Another thing, Pluto's orbit kind of wobbles up and down. So, when it's near Neptune or other big planets, it's usually above or below their path. Like another safety net. There's also something called VSK wobbling. Some researchers figured out how planets pull on each other. This explains why Pluto's orbit even though it looks crazy, stays pretty steady over time. Even in space, things can be kind of stable. This whole three-body problem is key to figuring out Pluto, Neptune, and other faraway stuff in our solar system. Back in the 80s, some computer simulations showed that Pluto's orbit can be a bit wild. Small changes could send it on a totally different path. But those simulations also said it's stable for billions of years. So don't panic yet. To really get how Pluto and Neptune get along, you have to think about the big boys. Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn. Neptune kind of controls Pluto's orbit. For every two laps Pluto makes, Neptune makes three. It's like they're connected. Jupiter's huge gravity also helps keep Pluto in line, and Saturn adds to the mix. All these forces keep Pluto from causing trouble. Without them, things could get messy, with planets crashing or getting thrown out of the solar system. The idea of Pluto hitting Neptune shows how crazy space can be. Studying these orbits teaches us a lot about how the solar system works, what gravity does, and how those faraway objects behave. Even though Pluto's orbit looks wild, it proves that there's a balance that keeps it in place. Space is full of surprises, and Pluto's weird orbit is just one example. Orbital chaos shows how easily a planet's path can change. Tiny differences in where Pluto starts out could change its whole future. Computer models help scientists see how Pluto and Neptune mess with each other using gravity. Even though things like wobbling and precession keep Pluto steady, simulations also show that its orbit isn't set in stone. 
Small changes can mean big results, making it hard to guess where Pluto will be way down the road. But, despite the chaos, Pluto's orbit has been pretty stable for billions of years. So, even when things look unpredictable, there's still some order. Predicting where stuff in space will go, especially weird orbits like Pluto's, is tough. There's always a bit of guesswork involved. Models help, but they depend on having the right starting info. Even a tiny mistake can throw things off. Besides all the chaos, Pluto's story reminds us that the universe is always changing. We know a lot about space, but Pluto shows us there's still so much more to learn. Seeing how the big planets pull on Pluto helps us understand how the solar system works, how one planet's spot can change everything for the others. So, why are smart people worried about Pluto and Neptune crashing? Well, even with all those stabilizing forces, Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the guys who said Pluto wasn't a planet anymore, says there are still mysteries out there. Tyson sees Pluto's new dwarf planet title as progress. We're just learning more about space. He thinks orbits like Pluto's show how much we still don't know. Even though he's hopeful, Tyson's thoughts on a Pluto-Neptune crash mean there are still questions to answer. Will they crash? Or is this just a cosmic hiccup? Only time and research will tell. For now, we're left wondering how much we don't know about our own backyard. The chance of a crash makes us look at the universe differently and challenges what we think we know about planets. A crash would shake things up and teach us a lot about how the solar system developed. To get the idea of a Pluto-Neptune crash, think about what they're made of. Pluto, that dwarf planet, is frozen solid. It's got nitrogen ice and air made of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Neptune is a big gas ball of mostly hydrogen, helium, and some other light stuff. A crash would be wild and change both planets. It would be something you could see from super far away. But remember, it's not just Neptune that keeps Pluto in check. Jupiter, the biggest planet, also pulls on it. Saturn adds to the mix, making a crash unlikely. Neptune's gravity is important, but the relationship between Pluto and Neptune isn't about crashing. They have a gravitational resonance. For every two times Pluto goes around the Sun, Neptune goes around three times. They miss each other. It's like a dance. But this balance isn't guaranteed forever. Small changes could mess it up. These changes could come from other stuff like a mystery planet way out there, or from things happening inside the planets. We need to keep studying Pluto, Neptune, and the stuff around them to see what happens. As tech gets better, we'll get clearer ideas about these faraway objects. New info might show us if Pluto and Neptune are safe, or if something could change. One thing scientists are looking at is the chance of some undiscovered object messing with their orbits. This Planet 9 is a maybe thing way out in the solar system. If it's real, its gravity could push Pluto around and make things unstable. The Sun's also changing. As it loses mass through solar wind, the planet's orbits could get bigger, including Pluto and Neptune. This could shift them around. Plus, the outer solar system is full of comets and other small stuff that could mess with Pluto's orbit. These things are rare, but possible.